Thank you for the um, introduction and thanks to the organizer for inviting me uh, to give you uh, an overview of present knowledge about uh, endocytosis and intracellular uh, transport of nanoparticles and how uh, I think that uh, one should proceed in an optimal way in this field. So uh, let me uh, just start by uh, briefly remind you that most uh, targeted uh, nanoparticles carry into drugs with an intracellular target and thus need to be endocytosed uh, by the cells. Uh, that is with the exception perhaps of uh, targeted nanoparticles for imaging purposes. So thus it is important to know what uh, happened uh, at the cellular level. So uh, entering into this, uh, the field of nanomedicine some five years ago, um, we uh, saw that uh, many studies are being published on uptake of uh, nanocarriers of drugs, but unfortunately, uh, in our opinion, far from, for, uh, far from all of them provided correct conclusions. So we um, decided to uh, write a review article where we critically discussed the possibilities and challenges of studying uh, cellular uptake and intracellular delivery of nanoparticles. So, um, most uh, nanoparticles and marker molecules need to enter the cells via uh, endocytic, an endocytic mechanism. And uh, here you see an overview of, um, of uh, uh, some of these mechanisms. To the left, you uh, have the clathrin, well known clathrin mediated endocytosis, whereby most re many receptors are endocytosed. Uh, in, uh, then you find the um, um, phagocytosis, uh, caveola-mediated endocytosis, and uh, uh, from membrane ruffles, uh, particles might be, might be uh, 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 taken up by our uh, macropinocytosis into uh, 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 forming macropinosomes. But importantly, uh, several other uh, clathrin-independent uh, uh, mechanisms uh, also uh, operate uh, in a cell. And most of these endocytic pathways, uh, the cargo uh, ends up in the early endosomes from where they are sorted either down the degradative pathways uh, into lysosomes or they might, be, they might recycle out to the cell surface as uh, is the case for the transferrin receptor. Importantly, there are also um, intracellular transport uh, from endosomes into the Golgi apparatus. So, so, so for, uh, from many of these uh, studies of uh, cellular uptake, uh, um, no universal characteristics can be found for uh, how to produce nanoparticles for uh, an optimal uh, uptake. Uh, many studies, however, report uh, a size of around uh, 50 nanometer to be uh, optimal. optimal. Uh, also, uh, various surface properties uh, have been shown to, to play an important role. And uh, it's also important to, to stress that uh, many uh, endocytic mechanisms uh, are uh, cell type uh, dependent. So how can one choose the right uh, cell lines as a model system? People cho <coughs> choose what they call relevant cell lines um, for instance, HEP2 cells as models for, uh, for liver cells and, and HEC293 for, for kidney cells. Uh, however, uh, it's important to, uh, to uh, note that cell, uh, uh, cancer cell lines behave quite differently from normal cells. For instance, um, uh, they often lack polarization and uh, uh, the polarized cells uh, studied uh, uh, have a caveola on the basolateral side only. Some of the common studies, um, uh, common errors that can be observed uh, include the use of rather unspecific pharmacological uh, inhibitors. And uh, also when defining cellular uptake, uh, this is uh, often uh, without dif really differentiating uh, cell surface bound nanoparticles from uh, from those that are really internalized. And in many, stu many studies, uh, caveola has been regarded as a way for uh, nanoparticles to escape the lysosomal degradation uh, uh, by uh, them accumulating in 
compartments called uh, uh, caveosomes. So in our review, we uh, uh, provide this uh, table with, um, uh, as a toolbox for uh, use of pharmacological uh, inhibitors, uh, where we uh, highlight uh, some important uh, possible pitfalls, such as uh, uh, when using methyl beta cyclodextrin or philippine to uh, extract cholesterol from, uh, from the cells. Uh, uh, one should uh, uh, keep in mind that cholesterol affects much more than caveola. We and others have shown that, uh, that also clathrin-mediated endocytosis and, um, and uh, clathrin-independent uh, mechanisms such as pinocytosis is, uh, can be blocked. So, um, as mentioned, the caveosomes uh, almost found their way into textbooks, but uh, they are actually uh, recently shown to be uh, artifacts due to overexpression of uh, caveolins and caveola mut uh, caveolin mutants. So, uh, uh, budding of caveola uh, rather uh, fused with, with uh, early endosomes, uh, as uh, for, uh, for many of the other. Uh, and uh, endocytic pathways. So, um, how can one make sure that uh, a given uh, ligand uh, or a nanoparticle is internalized by the cell and not only absorbed to the cell surface? Uh, electron microscopy uh, is a good way to investigate this by performing serial sectioning or um, by uh, fixa uh, fixation of the cells uh, in presence of ruthenium red, uh, which will then stain membranes connected to the surface. Um, confocal microscopy um, with 3D rendering uh, from the set stack of images and also colocalization studies uh, between uh, nanopart fluorescent nanoparticles and, uh, and various intracellular uh, or endosomal markers uh, uh, can be used. So here you see an example of an electron micrograph of a cell that has been, where the surface has been stained with ruthenium red. And you can see that this vacuolar-like structure resembling a caveosome is actually a staining, stained positive for ruthenium red and, and are then surface uh, connected. Here you see an um, uptake of 10 nanometer gold nanoparticles from the apical side of a polarized MDCK cell where they um, accumulate within uh, an endosome, not staining uh, uh, for uh, ruthenium red. So um, cell uptake uh, of nanoparticles uh, is often performed by, uh, studied by confocal microscopy, and uh, there are some um, potential uh, pitfalls to be aware of. Um, large, in, in many publications, one can uh, often see that, uh, that large, large fluorescent patches uh, um, are um, presented. Uh, resulting in uh, inevitable false uh, colocalization uh, and overlap between uh, the organelles and, uh, and the normal particle. As you can see here, uh, the, no, <clears throat> an example of normal particles uh, in red, which uh, inevitably will uh, uh, form, uh, will colocalize and overlap with these uh, green uh, patches of uh, mitochondrial staining. So uh, the, these uh, such results can be a uh, result of uh, low optical resolution in the confocal images or uh, 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 scanning uh, and acquiring images uh, uh, that um, are with too thick optical slices. And uh, uh, another reason might be unspecific immunolabeling of uh, cellular organelles. So, um, in addition to improving uh, uh, micro microscopy settings and uh, uh, immunolabeling, some uh, imp important control experiments are often lacking in these studies. Uh, for instance, um, uh, addressing whether uh, the nanoparticles are uh, at the cell surface or uh, actually internalized. 
So this um, um, can be addressed, for instance, by uh, binding the nanoparticles uh, to the cells on ice or immunolabeling them uh, prior to, to permeabilizing and, fix, uh, and fixing the cells. So here you see an example of a ricin uh, Q. conjugate uh, uh, binding to the cell surface on ice. And uh, in green, uh, you have the, the labeling of early endosomes. It's also important to, um, to investigate endocytosis uh, after various times of, of endocytosis. And um, after 30 minutes, uh, these uh, rising Q dots can be observed uh, uh, in vesicular structures, uh, partially co-localizing also with, uh, now with the early endosomal marker, EA1. And um, making 3D images from set stacks um, uh, can also be, uh, be used to, uh, to uh, tell whether the, the vesicles are uh, really internalized, as seen here for, uh, from, um, along the set axis and the side view of the cell. So uh, how can nanoparticles reach the target tissue and enter target cells? Here, uh, size and uh, the surface properties uh, are uh, among the critical factors. And um, as we have um, heard from many of the talks uh, at this meeting, uh, uh, passive targeting um, uh, due to the EPR effect has uh, proven uh, successful for targeting uh, to the tumors. Due to, uh, to nanoparticles passing through the fenestra and also uptake in rest. And in mice, actually, there are, are reports that up to 10% of injected dose uh, can reach uh, and target uh, tumors. Uh, concerning active targeting uh, of uh, ligand uh, nanoparticle conjugates to cell surface receptors, uh, this um, can be considered uh, uh, an effect of uh, selective retention uh, of the, the nanoparticles uh, upon encountering, encountering the target cells and, and not uh, uh, an active target-seeking effect. However, selective targeting to target the cells can nevertheless uh, give an important increase uh, in endocytosis of, of the nanoparticles. And uh, in humans, um, uh, studies have shown that actually less than 1% uh, of the uh, when, uh, injected dose of an active targeted uh, nanoparticle uh, will, uh, will reach the tumor. So uh, in uh, biolo <coughs> biological fluid, uh, fluids, a uh, corona of adsorbed biomolecules uh, will, um, will form at the cell surface of, of the nanoparticles. And, um, and uh, this corona uh, defines uh, the nanoparticle surface and uh, is a crucial de determinant for how the cells actually see and interact with, with the nanoparticles. And, uh, and consequently, uh, this corona will play, uh, also play an important role in uh, cellular uptake. For instance, uh, immunoglobulin binding causes opsonization, which promotes receptor-mediated uh, phagocytosis. And uh, several studies show that uh, injected pegylated nanoparticles have decreased uh, protein absorption, and uh, this leads to longer circulation times. And um, as we learned from um, Kenneth Dawson uh, yesterday, uh, uh, he recently published a study where showing or demonstrating that active targeting of uh, nanoparticles to deceased cells uh, might be compromised by a, a corona-induced shielding of the surface bound ligands from, from interacting with with the receptors of the, of the target cells. So um, there are also some important findings uh, that the uptake of a ligand uh, functionalized nanoparticle can occur by uh, endocytic mechanisms uh, different from those used by the ligand itself. Uh, for instance, uh, a study of uh, cetuximab gold nanoparticles uh, uh, was shown to modulate uh, traffic and um, uh, and mechanism of antibody-induced receptor endocytosis. And uh, multimeric anti-ICAM nanoconjugates are uh, demonstrated to be endocytosed by 
the endothelial cells via a triggered micropinocytosis-like mechanism. Uh, also, uh, a multivalent uh, TAT protein uh, uh, conjugate, conjugated to quantum dots uh, is shown to, has been shown to induce RAC uh, activation and macropinocytosis. And uh, finally, uh, quite recently, we also um, found and published that uh, uptake of these ricin Q dot nanoconjugates uh, occurred via a macropinocytosis like uh, mechanisms uh, different from uh, uh, ricin itself. So how can one avoid the degradation of an endocytose substance and deliver it outside the endosomes and lysosomes? So such endosomal release can be achieved either by, by uh, photochemical internalization, whereby uh, one introduce um, uh, amphiphilic uh, photosensitizer together with uh, drugs or nanoparticles. And um, this will then uh, uh, insert into the membrane, and, uh, and uh, after endocytosis, uh, uh, the endosomes might be, um, endosomal membrane might uh, then be uh, disrupted by uh, uh, exposing the cells to, to light that will then generate uh, singlet oxygen, and, uh, and uh, you will then have release of the nanoparticles or drugs into the cytosol. Another strategy is using high concentrations of uh, positively charged peptides so, uh, with lytic activity or um, rely on the proton sponge effect whereby uh, you use uh, cationic polymers uh, buffering uh, acidification of uh, late endosomes and this leads to influx of uh, chloride, chloride and water and uh, and then increase will increase the osmotic pressure until membrane burst. Uh, I would say that, that uh, perhaps th these two strategies uh, might be a bit unrealistic uh, in the in vivo situation. So what happened uh, to a cell that takes up nanoparticles uh, concerning side effects on intracellular transport and finding out how to eliminate them based on, on studies in cell culture? Uh, I will then highlight uh, some uh, findings uh, from, um, from a paper uh, uh, where we found that, uh, that nanoparticles coupled to transferrin or endocytosed via the clathrin-dependent uh, uh, mechanism. However, they accumulate and do not recycle out of the cells. And uh, we also found that uh, nanoparticles may end up in cell compartments differing from uh, that of the ligand itself. For instance, uh, the toxin transport from uh, endosomes to, to Golgi uh, did not occur uh, in, in these conjugates. And furthermore, and importantly, we found that nanoparticles accumulating in the cells can disturb transport pathways within the cell. So to sum up with some needs for future studies of nanoparticles, we uh, think that uh, it's a need to develop uh, in vitro systems that better mimic uh, the in vivo tissue morphology and that uh, in vitro uh, studies should be carried out in the biological fluids uh, in which they will be studied, applied. And furthermore, uh, preclinical studies will during the next years increase our understanding of uh, cellular function and and be important for uh, animal studies. Uh, however, more knowledge is needed about biodistribution, metabolism, and safety of uh, nanop nanoparticles. Uh, but from the knowledge that we already have, uh, uh, I think that it's important uh, to focus on, um, on biodegradable nanoparticles, at least if uh, injected in, in humans. So uh, during these days of the meeting, we have seen very many uh, interesting nanoparticles uh, synthesized, and, uh, but uh, I think that uh, a, a closer cross-functional collaboration is uh, needed uh, uh, in order to improve the quality of, uh, of studies and, and thereby bring nanoparticles uh, to the clinic in, uh, in an optimal way. So by an image, a picture of uh, our group, I will thank you for your attention.